Well, it's a little bumpy up here today. I was going to take a, a little short cross country, but the ceilings are a little bit low, and uh, it's kind of rough out, so I'm just going to hang out here in the area. Thought it'd be a good opportunity, though, to run through some of these uh, instruments and such that are in the uh, Cessna 172. So over here on the top left hand corner we got our airspeed indicator. That tells us how fast we're flying through the air obviously. Depending on what kind of airplane you're in, what year model, it may be indicated in knots or in miles per hour. And to the right of that is the attitude indicator. The attitude indicator, it kind of replicates what, um, what the airplane is doing in relationship to the horizon if you couldn't see outside. So it's primarily used for when we're flying in the clouds. It helps us to um, basically tell which way is up and which way the airplane is turning. The blue represents the uh, sky, the brown represents the ground, and the little, um, the little yellow line represents the wings of the airplane. All right, and to the right of that is the altimeter. The altimeter shows us, uh, indicates how high we are above sea level. It doesn't actually tell you how high you are above the ground, but it tells you how high you are above sea level. Right now, I'm indicating 1,500 feet, uh, which is about 1,000 feet above the ground, because the elevation below me is about 500 feet. And in the bottom left-hand corner, I've got the turn coordinator. The turn coordinator helps me keep the airplane coordinated while making turns with proper use of the rudder. And it also aids, especially in instrument flying, flying in the clouds, in doing what we call a standard rate turn. Standard rate turns when you turn the airplane at about three degrees per second, which is a very slow rate of turn uh, that we use in the clouds. And to the right of that is the heading indicator. That tells us which direction that we are headed uh, in relationship to magnetic north. So before we take off, we have to calibrate that to the magnetic compass that's sitting up on the glare shield. In the bottom right-hand corner, that is the vertical speed indicator. That shows us how high or how fast we're climbing or descending in feet per minute. That kind of wraps up the six-pack. Those six instruments are referred to sometimes as the six-pack, and those are the primary flight instruments. All right, let's look over here on the left. I've got some other stuff here. In the top left-hand corner, i got my clock. It's uh, not just a clock. I mean, the clock obviously tells you what time it is, but it's also a flight timer and an elapsed timer. If I need to time something, like maybe switching fuel tanks. Gauge over here on the left is called the suction gauge, and it measures the vacuum pressure, the vacuum pressure inside the, um, the vacuum system that runs the attitude indicator and heading indicator. And down here, I've got my fuel quantity, uh, left tank and right tank. It's uh, displayed in both pounds and in gallons. Below that, I've got my oil temperature and my oil pressure. Again, green arc. Green is good. It's the normal operating range. I'm uh, continually scanning my engine instruments while I'm flying to make sure that the instruments are in the green arc. Bottom left-hand side, I've got the uh, amp meter. That shows the health of the electrical system. It shows if the, uh, the battery is either taking a charge or discharging, which kind of reveals to me uh, what the alternator is doing, if it's working or not. And in the bottom left-hand corner, I've got the primer. That's how I start the engine when its engine's cold. Uh, the red switch is the master switch. That's how I turn on power to the airplane uh, to get everything uh, started, power from the battery. To the right is the key. There, The key you see there is the ignition switch. That's how I turn on and off the magnetos and engage the starter. All right, let's move over here to the right where I've got the course deviation indicator. This is used to navigate. The course deviation indicator works in conjunction with the number one uh, navigation radio. I can uh, dial in a frequency of a nav aid or go direct to a GPS waypoint, and this will help give me guidance left or right to steer directly to it. It also is used for an ILS approach uh, and VNAV approaches where we need vertical guidance to get up and down. Uh, to a runway. And if we uh, go to the very bottom here, you'll see that there's another course deviation indicator. This is uh, works in conjunction with the number two radio. In between those two is the engine tachometer. That tells us how fast the engine's turning. You can see we're doing about 2,350 RPMs right now. All right, uh, let's take a look at the radios real quick. Uh, for the radios, I've got an audio panel at the top. The audio panel helps me to uh, select which radio I'm going to transmit and receive on. It also helps me control the intercom, how I talk back and forth to the passengers. I can receive Bluetooth. Um, I can make a phone call, talk, uh, talk on it. 
uh, through my headset, and even listen to music if I'm out, you know, on a cross country. Below that is the number one Navcom. This is a moving map display combined with uh, a navigation and communication radio. Um, this thing has a lot of capabilities. It shows traffic on it. It shows uh, uh, weather and uh, uh, just a whole lot of information uh, built into that Garmin 750 Navcom. Uh, below that is my number two radio. This is kind of a backup radio. It's the number two radio. I can transmit and receive on it. And I can also use it to navigate by. And lastly, at the very bottom is the transponder. And the transponder is what we use to uh, let ATC know where we're at. ATC can see us on the radar and they can see our um, altitude. Uh, not only ATC, but uh, other aircraft that have transponders similar to this called ADSB in and out, they can see uh, us on their moving map display. So it helps keep us all a little safer. Okay, almost done here. Let's take a quick look right here at the center to the left. I got the carburetor heat. I've got uh, the knob that controls the instrument lights. This is my throttle, pretty much my gas pedal. Throttle, that's where I set my RPMs. Mixture, this is where I control the fuel uh, going into the carburetor. Over here is my flap lever and flap indicator, a uh, place to charge devices, cabin heat and cabin air. The trim wheel is down here, uh, backup microphone and fuel selector valve. And finishing it up, I got my lights, my exterior lights, my pitot heat, all my uh, circuit breakers and my avionics master switch. Well, that kind of sums up uh, as quickly as I can. Just a quick uh, tour of the Cessna 172 cockpit. I hope that helps you out a little bit. And I highly recommend that if you don't have it already, pick up a copy of the Pilot's Handbook of Aeronautical Knowledge. I'll put a link in the description below. And uh, you can check that out. There's a lot more in depth about these airplane instruments. And I'm sure your flight instructor is going to give you a lot more information at a lot slower pace, hopefully. All right, well, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.